have the one and only Mac Arnold here. In fact, I should call you Dr. Mac Arnold here this <laughs> afternoon. How you doing, Mac? I'm feeling good, Anne. You okay? I'm doing real good. You're looking good. I am feeling wonderful. Okay, even for an old guy, you're doing pretty good. You got it. Really. <laughs> <laughs> well, this sure is a treat, and you brought along uh, one of the people that plays with you that you've known for a good while. Yes. Who, who's with you here today? Max Hightower. Max Hightower. Yes. Is he, is, he's pretty tall. He's pretty tall. He, <laughs> he, pretty, he plays some pretty tall music, too. Now. Oh, he's playing bass nowadays, which he never played before. And he's uh, playing harmonica. He used to run my in-laws crazy on the school bus back up in the <laughs> South Carolina. Oh, uh, man, I, ne I never knew that they knew him, but... When, once they saw him, they said, that's the guy that used to blow that high money go on the bus. Run us yeah. crazy. <laughs> is that a true story, Max? Oh, let, let's just say it is. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but I do know one thing. I will tell you this on the bass. Um, I didn't used to play bass. And on our last European tour, Max says, uh, well, I just need you to learn to play bass on this one song. And I was like, okay, I can do that. And so, you know, I learned it. And then when we got out there, he said, you're doing pretty good, man. Just want you to play on a few more. Yeah. And so but after about uh, four weeks uh, and, and a little instruction by Mac, I, I learned some bass. How about that? How about that? Well, you guys have been, you, you've known him for 23 years. 23 years. That's right. But uh, you've been playing together for roughly... 13. It's been over 13. 13, years. right. And, you know, I never knew it was you until I asked Mac before we came on the air that uh, you were the one that was working at uh, as a mechanic and Mac would come in with your truck to get it fixed, repaired, yes. right? Yes. And and tell us the rest of the story here now, Mac. Well, I, I worked for Belk and uh, I was driving a truck for Belk and Max was, was working for UPS Truck Lease. And uh, I would take my truck in to get marker lights and replace and get fueled up and grease jobs the first one stuff in another. And the guy that was on the fuel line one day said, hey Matt, that, I, I, well I was playing blues on my stereo in the truck. And uh, this guy on the fuel line said, hey Matt, there's a guy inside. He loves the blues, man. I, I said, who is it? He said, this guy named Max. And he, I said, what do we, do we play an instrument? He said, yeah, he play a harp. I said, what? <laughs> a harp? Yeah, he said, I, he don't like me saying it, but I tell him, said, Max, play that mouth harp for me. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I went on, I didn't have time that day to go inside. So uh, when I went back again the following week, I uh, went inside and Max was in there working. And he had this old, uh, I guess a boom box, you might call it, playing and it had Muddy Waters on it. So I started singing the Muddy Water songs when we went through the door, I could hear it. So when I got back to where he was, he said, hey, you know that guy? I said, what guy? The guy on the radio. 
I said, yeah, I used to play the bass for him. He looked at me and said, oh, man. He couldn't he believe looked, it, could he? He couldn't believe it. So two or three days later, I got a phone call. Hey, man, I, I was trying to do some research, and I found you in Muddy Waters' book, and I found the songs that you played on and all that. Man, you don't need to be driving no truck. You need to come out and, and start playing the blues again. I said, nope. No way, man. The musicians, they, they're not loyal. Not, I'm too old to be bothered anymore. So Max called me every few days with a new story. I said, no, nah, Max, we'll wait a little while. Called me. He kept calling me. Over a 10 year span, Max called me. And I guess the you song. You ever get tired of calling him? <laughs> <laughs> I, guess, I guess the sun was shining right that day. And I said, okay, Max. Uh, if you want to start looking for a group, I, I'll assist you, but he, I'll leave it up to you to put a group together, man, because I don't want to be bothered with these guys. They, they have giving me a heart attack. Uh, he said, well, we'll work it out. So Max and I started running all over the uh, south here, look, listening to musicians, practicing with them. Oh, man, you won't believe some of the attitudes we ran into. Yeah, so we ran away from them. <laughs> so, but it took us about three years after that mm -hmm. to really put a group together that we thought would, we could be comfortable with. So here we are 13 years later, uh, Max uh, Hightower, Austin Brazier, and we pick up a drummer, whoever's a super good drummer, contact Mac on because we're always looking for a good drummer when our regular drummer can't make it. But here we are. You know, that is terrific. Hey, Max, uh, is this like a dream come true to have put this together? Anybody that would call somebody for 10 years? Well, you, you got to understand, I think what happened is if you just kind of look at the, the history of the music, mm -hmm. when, when, the, when the 70s, late 70s, it started kind of going down, and then the 80s hit, and that's you know, kind of like that whole syn synthetic era, you know, mm -hmm. where, I don't know, everybody, they were trying new things, and... Um, the, the, the music was just changing. You know, you had punk rock, you had all these different styles, and the blues just took a nose, nose dive. Mm -hmm. And then when I met Mac was in the early 90s. So it was starting to come back up, and I, which I didn't really know. I was, I was so young, I just knew that it was a great music, and I knew that they were having blues festivals, and there were blues societies, and, and all these things. And I knew that the blues festivals were huge. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, and a lot of the players had played, you know, some of them had played with Muddy Waters and this and that. And, and of course, that was my inspiration ever since I was a kid. And you got to understand, the only reason I got into the music in the first place was because of a Muddy Waters tape. And One particular song or one particular song? Well, well what had happened, here's the short version, is <laughs> I had heard Jimi Hendrix for the first time. And I had no idea, I mean who this guy was or anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, to discover Jimi Hendrix in the late 80s, that's kind of, you know, that was old music, you know, right. people just didn't listen to it. Well, when I heard him, I bought an album, and on the back of it, it, it mentions some influences, and one of his influences was Muddy Waters. I didn't even know what blues was, but this, the name Muddy Waters didn't make any sense, so I went and I bought a tape, a little cassette tape, and um, it was a live, Muddy Mississippi Waters live tape. And when I heard that thing, I had one of the old cassette players, you know, where you recorders and yeah. had batteries in it. Back in I, the old days. I listened to that thing that night till the sun sun was coming up. I wouldn't even go to sleep and it was dragging. It was <laughs> so anyway, I was, so that whole Muddy Waters thing got me started on, on it. And so and then I, I had went to some blues festivals and so I knew the possibilities. Mm -hmm. And I knew how important Muddy Waters was probably had the greatest influence on not just blues, but all music. I mean, the Rolling Stones got their name from Muddy Waters. He had an influence on all music. Probably one of the greatest influences of anybody. And then, so when I met Mac, and for him just to, just real nonchalant, you know, yeah, I used to play with him. That that just startled me. It didn't even make no sense for him to, I, I, it took me a little bit, I had to digest that to, for it to make sense. I'm like, I don't, does he not, you know, and so that's why I chased it for so long because, um, and I feel sure Matthew knew it, but maybe he just wanted to get out of it. But I felt like the, 
I don't feel like, Mac, I don't want to say you owed anybody anything, but the blues world needed you. <laughs> they really did, man. We, we, we need to keep that around, you know. We need to keep That's the legends. Important. Yes, yeah. the legends. You know, get out of that truck. Yeah, get, out, get out of that truck. That sounds like a song, doesn't yeah. it? Get out of that truck. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Well, you know, it is really a treasure to have Max sitting back here and to have you. I've seen you play. Uh, you were playing last summer at the Blues Cruise down at John Holloway. And, uh, yes. Mac was doing his dance thing around, and you were doing your thing there, and it was an awesome concert that I saw you at. So it's uh, great to have you in studio and to meet you. It's nice to meet you, too. Absolutely. <laughs> so um, we're going to hear a quick word from our sponsors when we come back. I suppose we might could get you to play a song. Five dollars. Five dollars? Yeah. I got it right here. Five dollars on right, the table. <laughs> All right, let's hear a quick word from our sponsors, and we'll be right back. That's right. We're right back here at Shark Facets Gallery. Matt Arnold told me it was going to cost me $5 for all of us to hear a song. I think that's a heck of a bargain. I got my $5 right here, Matt Arnold. What you going to play for us now? Uh, the price went up. <laughs> <laughs> you mean the price isn't right? <laughs> Since I'm a cornbread and collard greens, man, we're going to do a little song entitled Cornbread. Cornbread, okay. Yes. Are you ready, Max? All right. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
by the one and only Mac Arnold. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mac. Yeah, we did that special, especially for you, man. Yeah, I'm telling you what, it doesn't get any better than that, Mac. Thank you so much. Yeah, you know, you have such a great time, and you, you know, we don't have time to go through everything. If people want to know about Mac Arnold, of course, you've got a website that tells about yourself. What's that website? That website is macarnold.com dot com and also dr macarnold's blues restaurant at gmail dot com okay so uh, dr blues uh, dr mac arnold's blues restaurant that's right mac opened up a restaurant gosh i think you're coming up on a one year anniversary you were supposed to open and it snowed wasn't that, that right is correct. that was last year last right before year. valentine's day that is true <laughs> and you had to open a little later and everything. How's the restaurant doing? The restaurant is doing great. Uh, we're getting ready to switch over from Latin American fusion to southern style home cooking. Well, now that's going to be uh, that's a good thing, and particularly because you supply some of the uh, some of the vegetables, don't you, from your farm? Yes, I sure do. Uh, I I grow collard greens uh, exclusively to do our Cornbread and Collard Greens Festival every year. Uh, we're coming up to our ninth annual, uh, as a matter of fact, in April. April this year. 25th, isn't it? April 23rd is when we'll start, right. and we'll end up the 25th at Dr. Macron's Blues Restaurant, uh, 1237 Pendleton Street in Greenville, South Carolina. Well, you know, I think that's going to be great. Now, you've really, um, why'd you open a restaurant? Well, uh, you know, I love cooking, and that Max Hightower, uh, he's one of the people that influenced me to uh, just concentrate on doing a restaurant. Uh, so it's his fault? Yes, it is. <laughs> uh, if I fail, uh, which I'm sure I won't, but if I do, it'll be his fault because <laughs> <laughs> he's the guy that pointed me towards the restaurant, you know. Uh, we used to rehearse every Sunday at my house, and I would cook. And every week I would hear, man, you need to open a restaurant. Man, you need to open a restaurant. Everyone that ate my food over the past 10, 15 years, they always say, man, you need to open a restaurant. So uh, I decided that I would open a music venue. But the restaurant, I had to have a restaurant in order to have a music venue in Greenville. They don't want any more clubs in Greenville, uh, the city though. Right. Uh, they've had some tough times with uh, people saying that they're going to do one thing with uh, a, a club mm -hmm. and they would turn it into a, a dance hall. They would push all the furniture back and they would make more room for more people and sure. they don't like that too much. So I ended up having to open a restaurant along with my music venue. And so uh, they laid me out to uh, seat uh, 232 people at the restaurant. So uh, we have a music venue and restaurant. I think that's great. Now, now you've got this uh, Collards Festival coming up, nine years of doing this. You serve um, cornbread and collards? Yes, cornbread and collards, pulled pork. Um, oh, you got a few other things on that too. Barbecued chicken. A baked chicken, fried chicken. Uh, well, we're just gonna do the whole smear this year: macaroni and cheese, and baked sweet potatoes, uh, baked white potatoes. Stop! I'm getting hungry. I can't stand it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we are here with Mac Arnold and Max Hightower. It is such a pleasure to have both of you here. Let's hear a quick word from South Carolina Radio News. A word from our sponsors. And yes, we're coming back. We'll get. I don't know. I think I got a few more $5 bills here. So maybe we'll play some more music and talk a few more tall tales and a few true stories. Don't you go away. Um, are you a pirate or a pack rat? Do you have a vacation of a lifetime sitting in the attic? Or a college tuition hung on a wall? Or is a fabulous retirement hidden in your jewelry box? Bring those items to Sharp Facets Gallery. We can establish value and buy from you or sell for you. And so ends another chapter at Sharp Facets Gallery. 72 Bypass and on the web, sharpfacets.com. Oh, that's right. 
we're right back here. Reed just came back and said that uh, a gal named Carolina Red is uh, is listening online up there in Tennessee, and uh, she said uh, you need to bring her some cornbread, Mac. Hello there, Miss Carolina. We, we sure do that. <laughs> In fact, you're going to, uh, when are you going to be up there in uh, Tennessee? It looks like Sunday, February 22nd, you'll be in Maryville, Tennessee. That is correct. Okay. And then, uh, gosh, you have quite a schedule. You're all over the place. Well, uh, we try to stretch as much as we possibly can. Yeah, Max <laughs> needs a paycheck, right? That's right. <laughs> That's right. I try to help him out as much as I possibly can. I wish I could give him a million dollars because I'm telling you. Uh, when I, the, I think a million dollars of it. Yeah, you know, yes. he's a, he really must have thought a lot of you to keep chasing you down till he got you uh, got you hooked in here. Yes, I, I'm sure glad he's not the FBI because he would have caught me long ago. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's like a bloodhound. Once he gets the smell of something, he's right on it. Well, um, Max, you know, now that you've been playing with him for this many, for 10, 13 years, 13 years, yes. um, are you glad you made this decision to chase him down and make it happen? I knew it was the right thing a long time ago. It was just, it was just a matter of, uh, you know, finding the, it really, it was really a matter of finding the right players because it's, the blues is it's not like any other style of music. Um, it ain't something you learn out of a book or off the paper. It's, it's, it's I can't it's explain. It's a feeling. It. It's a, you got to feel yeah, it, don't and, you? Yeah, and and we, you know, we went through a lot of different people, and and uh, but you got to find somebody that really loves and understands the music, and uh, um, and we had Austin Brazier, he's our guitar player, and that was kind of the missing link, and everything just kind of you know, you know fell into place. But without, with you, you start. It's like cooking or anything else, you know. Some you put the wrong ingredients in there, too much garlic, or it just takes over and it don't work. Well, if so you don't we, have the love in there, it you, just so doesn't we, taste the same. So we, we had to find the right the fight the right ingredients, and, and when we got it, uh, it worked. And, and we we knew it. You know, it's funny. We we first started playing. We did maybe we did this little six week run at this one little place, and uh, and it went great. It started backing out, and then after that, um, we played some shows, and nobody showed up. But then we realized we like we got something really good here, but nobody knows what we're doing or knows anything about it. So that's when we we, we decided to put out an album or CD, and um, and we did, and, and we we put it out. Even though we wasn't wasn't a big record label or anything, we ran a full page ad in Blues Review magazine. And when that baby hit, the phone started ringing, the emails started coming in, everything started falling in place. So. Um, even though we were just a small label, they didn't know that. Yeah, Everybody okay. wanted to know who we were. <laughs> and, uh, well, that, you know, that's great. I understand you're getting ready to do another CD, are you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's called, um, the name of the CD is, is Give It Away. And uh, Now, wait a minute. Give It Away. How are you going to make any money at this? Give It Away. Uh, well, <laughs> well, it, well, you know, the, 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 the song Give It Away, um, it, it's it's about, it's kind of about, it's about, Giving, giving back, but not with money, you know, like, um, you know, just helping somebody mm -hmm. out or, or like, like our troops, you know, there's troops that, you know, they give their life, you know, you and it's not always about money. Sure. And um, so the name of the song is Giving Away. We're actually going to give it away for one day. Wow. When it first released, the first day, we don't have a date yet, 24 hours, you can download it, take it, whatever, give it to your friends, and so, uh, yeah, we're, we're looking for, and it's pretty much all original, but I got to I gotta tell you this one little story, you want to okay. some story? Yeah. We used to have a bus, and um, Mac had a bus, and he would drive, and he would he would sit up there, and he would sing this Jerry Reed song all the time, you know, and, I, and what is it, Amos Moses? Yeah. He would. <laughs> yeah, come Amos. Yeah, I like that one. Yeah, okay. We, we just everybody get a kick out of that, and um, we was in the studio, and uh, and we just got to talking about it, and we're like, man, Mac, you ought to just do that song. What's that? And so he's like, well, let's do it. <laughs> and so that's good. That's the only cover tune we're going to have on there, but uh, I think it's a good one. Well, now you do a lot of the songwriting. We, yeah, we do a lot of the songwriting. Okay. I, you know, I write all the time, okay. all the time. But a lot of the things that I write from, I pull from, um, from watching Mac. See, 
it, it, how can I put it? Um, I, I sometimes I mirror back Mac back at him. He might say something, you know. Like one time we were we were just messing around. He always says the dog on right, and I had this little groove, and I'm messing. Around. I said, Mac, you want to write something about dog on right? And then he starts. He actually, believe it or not, Mac wrote that one on the spot. I can believe <laughs> on the that. spot, you know, he, he done that, you know. And then, but then we have other ones too, you know. We just uh, look, and I look at it like this. Sometimes I may write the, the, the lyrics to a tune, but then I sit down with these guys with Austin and Mac, and then Austin takes the arrangement, he tweaks it, makes it right, and he throws in. You gotta have a cool lick in there, you know? <laughs> and then Mac will come up with a good groove, and then. He puts his own, you know, vocally of the arrangement on the melody, and, and then then you got a song. You know, it's one thing. Now, to how do you remember what you've done here, though? Because you know, here you are. You're in the studio. You're messing around and everything. Are you recording all this while you're doing well, this, this? Well, this comes about just like. Well, I will say this. We'll, we won't talk about your restaurant just for a second. Sure. When we first started, our first rehearsal was was in a um, was in a storage building. Okay. A storage building. Okay. And. Uh, and when we got done, Mac would, I, I don't think Mac really cared for the storage building too much. And he just kind of threw it out there. He said, you know, guys, if you want to, uh, you can come on down to the farm and I'll cook for you. <laughs> <laughs> I guess they wouldn't have to leave the yeah, house. Right. We're like, well, okay. We got down to the house, and of course, we got there, and he had the grill smoking. And he got his own special chicken. <laughs> and he had those Crowder peas cooking in a pot and cornbread and tomatoes. And it was, it was on. Did y'all do any work? No, we act, no, <laughs> you know, the, 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 the beauty of it was, is we, as we were rehearsing and playing and coming up with songs, all this food would be cooking, you know? Yeah. And then for some reason, all Mac's friends and family start showing up. I guess they knew the food was cooking, you know. And they could smell it. Before long, you, you, you had a party going on. And I've always said that's kind of where a lot of the songs and stuff came from. Sure. <laughs> well, you know, I guess what I was asking, you know, I'll come up with something right off the top of my head, and it's like if you don't write it down right that minute, it's gone, you that's know, that, yes. and that's why I was thinking when you're practicing and doing stuff, if somebody does something cool, do you just turn the recorder on and let it rip oh, yeah. so that yeah, yes. you can go back and say, that was really cool, now how did we do that? Yeah. Yes, yes, that's right. Yeah. So, I've thought of things and, and be halfway asleep. And hop up and run, get the telephone, and lay it down on the telephone. And the next day, uh, I add to it. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> you never know where inspiration or song is going to come from, or a great idea. That's true. Well, see, a lot of times when I write, I, it, it sometimes it takes me a while. You know, I'm, I try to, I don't know, I'm thinking about it. it. Might take me a week or a year. Who knows? Mm -hmm. But Mac, seeing now, this is just what I've observed, Mac. You may say, man, you, you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> but, but no, it seems like with Mac. You just kind of throw them on the spot or whatever. You just better have the recorder going, right? Because once it starts coming out of his, you know, through his head and out right. of his mouth, you know, I don't You'd think, never be able to repeat it again. No, I don't even think he knows what he's going to say. So a lot of times we'd have it. I'll have it going, and then I'll go back and I'll, I'll try to write out what he said. Yeah, I'm like, here, Matt, here's your song you just wrote. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty cool. But yeah, that's the way inspiration and stuff we, gets you. We were just in the studio. What was that one, Matt, you was writing about your Uncle D. Witt? Yeah, Uncle D. Witt on his camera. We're in the studio, and he's sitting there playing this thing. We're playing along. It's like take one, and he sings, and then he just, all right, let's do it again. We do it again. We're just, we're just cutting it live. And about the third time he does it. And then I, it's like I realized that he sang three different take three different uh, arrangements of the whole song, different lyrics, everything, every time. And they were all good. And they were all good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think it's great that you're having a great time, Mac. And I think it's great that you got back to your music and, and you've got someone like Max who uh, dogged you until you said, I got to do it. That's and right. uh, That's things right. just have turned out so great, haven't they? Yes, they sure have. I've, I've had a lot of fun. We've traveled many, 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 many miles since we started this journey. Uh, we've been to Europe for six years, and uh, we travel over 9,000 miles when we're there most of the time. We stay 30 days, and we're on the road every day. It's, it's been great. It has been great. Yes. Now, when we come back, we're going to take a little break. When we come back, I want you to play another song for us or two, and I want to find out how you became a doctor. Dr. Right. Mac Arnold. That's right. right. He wasn't a doctor when I first met him, but now he's a doctor. When'd you have time to do that? Hey, well, we'll be right back. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Mac Arnold and Max Hightower. Let's 
let's hear it, you guys. this year and uh, we did a few gigs for uh, the University of South Carolina mm -hmm. and I got recognized uh, while we were playing and last year I received an honorary degree from the University of South Carolina in music. Wow. So uh, right How did now, that make you feel? Uh, it made, it's so exciting. I feel so honored. Uh, it's a wonderful thing to be recognized after spending your whole life trying to be recognized. And finally, uh, after 63 years, it's still a wonderful thing. Isn't it amazing, though, when you get to the age where you can say, to 
get recognized. You know, I mean, you know, you go through your whole life, and I think when you are younger and everything, you want that recognition, right? You work hard for that recognition. That's when cool. you get to a point in your life where you know that you're good, you know that you've done well, and this type of thing, and then somebody recognizes you, and you go, well, it's about time, but geez. <laughs> 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 yeah, but that's a true honor. So uh, now do people have to address you as doctor? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, Dr. Mike Arnold, please. Please, okay. <laughs> we will make sure that we put that in there. Now, uh, when this happened, uh, Joe Biden, Vice President Joe Biden was there. Yes. Yes, yes and he was. He was giving the uh, commencement ad address, and then, uh, uh, what was it, um, Anita Zucker, and Chief Executive Officer of the Intertech Group in Charleston and an advocate for education. Yes. Yes, she got an honorary degree of education, and you got the honorary degree of Doctor of Music. That is correct. And I feel so honored. You are? Yes, I feel real honored. Real honored, and I'm sure real blessed. Thank you so much. That is, that yes. is truly, truly awesome. Has that given him a big head or anything, Max? You know, when y'all are practicing, does he say, now listen, I'm the doctor here? <laughs> every, every day. <laughs> it, it gave me a great feeling, yeah. too. Uh, uh, it gave me inspiration to start uh, a, a scholarship fund uh, with the upstate uh, uh, South Carolina University uh, upstate uh, over in Spartanburg, South Carolina. Last year in September, I uh, supported my first two students, and this will take place for the next nine years. How about that? Yes. And how did you? How did? How did the students get the scholarship? Uh, they will have to keep a uh, average, and it will be up to the, the university to uh, see that the correct person get the, gets the funds. Yes, the scholarship. Okay. And, and do you get to meet them? Or? Yes. Yes? We get to meet them. Okay. Yes. Uh, yeah. That's pretty exciting, isn't it's, it? It's really exciting. I, it's just so wonderful. It is. And then, of course, you have your charity, which I think is great. I can do anything. Yes. That is, to, that is to, for the preservation of music and arts in public schools. And we, we supply our instruments to schools that doesn't have enough instruments for the students to play. And uh, that's another exciting event that we do. Uh, it's just so great. Uh, I can't explain it all. You know, I, I, I think, and you collect, and if people have old instruments, yes, you, they can give them to you, yes. and you will refurbish them and make sure they get back in the schools. That is correct. Well, I have people that does the instrument repairs and we, we put them back into great conditions. So it's, it's, then we go out to the schools and we talk to the principal at the school. The principal introduces us to the music teacher or the arts uh, director and we go from there. You know, one time, uh, let's see, not last year, year before, you came down here at Christmas time and we went down and talked to the kids at the Salvation Army. That is correct. And I never really knew how they felt about it. But after the fact, I was talking to Melody down there, and she goes, Ann, that was the high point for a lot of these kids to be able to. They had, at first, they were kind of shy. Yes. And then right. they started talking and everything. And she said that really was a high point for a lot of the kids down there. I'm sure you find that in the schools, too. Yes, we love going to the schools. Uh, when we go to school, you know, they have this uniform sitting that they do it. Uh, most of the time we're in a big auditorium or something at the, at the school and the kids be sitting facing the stage and uh, we start playing and their eyes just light up like we brought Santa Claus in the room with us. Uh, and we do some of our curriculum that we've laid out for, for the program and we bring a student up on the stage, put an instrument in their hand and Max, or uh, Austin, or myself, show them a little line to play on the instrument. And then we build a band around them. Once we do that, everyone in the room... Me, will, me, me next, <laughs> me! <laughs> <laughs> How about for you, Max? How was this experience for you to be working with the kids at the Salvation Army? Oh, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty amazing. I mean, it's kind of how the whole thing started, you know. The, the, 
the song and everything. You know, it, 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 that was the whole concept. You know, behind the, you know, I can do. Anything. Oh, it started out as a song. Right. I mean, the foundation came a long way. It started out with, with a with a song and. And, and it's uh, a great song. I can do anything if I have my education. Isn't that right? Is that how that correct. goes? Yeah. Yes. And it, it goes on from there. I've got my education. Yep. It was, it was, uh, we, we started out, it was, I had this arrangement, you know, for years, and then Mac and I got together and we messed around with some stuff, and then it just didn't seem, couldn't really, it wasn't really going nowhere, and then, um, you know, I've got, I've got three kids, and, and, uh, I don't know, like I said, if it was from watching Barney or, or whatever, something just triggered it, but I remember sitting there, I remember sitting there and the television was on, and it was total chaos in the house. And um, and and it hit me. I can because the the way the groove went, it's like, bum, bum, it had this little feel to it. And it was like I can do anything. And it was like I can. I said it falls right in there. And we did that. And then um, I remember we was we was actually getting ready to do a show, and I called. It was cold outside. Remember that we was up in uh, well, I think it was Landon. Mm -hmm. And I, I said, Mac, what do you think about this? And I was like, uh -huh. he said, Yeah, man, I like that. And so I was like, let's build off of that. And I went and I wrote, I wrote some stuff. And then Mac heard it. And, and then that, Mac, he added the, probably the most important part of the song. is because I got my education. I stayed in school. It works for me. It works for you. And so, and then that kind of completed the song. And I was like, you know, so. And, and then. Just from watching Barney, is that what you're talking about? Cartoons brought it, it well, to it, you. Yeah, it's funny. It's like, you know, with, with so songs are funny, man. You know, you'll come up with an arrangement or a lick or something, and you don't ever know when you, you try to put them here and you try to put them there and it don't work and it don't work and it don't work. And then all of a sudden, at the craziest uh, hour, know, anytime yeah. it hits you and you're like, wait a minute, and the two kind of link up, you just better be able to get to an instrument or something really quick like we were talking about earlier and right. get it down, down you know. Because you'll never remember it an hour from now or something like that. Yeah. And, and then, then you get with the right people, you know, and, and you, you know, and, and you make it happen. And then uh, from that song, it was, you know, it just, it seemed like every time we played it out, you know, it inspired people. And then in, in the beginning, in the beginning, we would, we would bring in before foundation or any of that, um, we would bring in, you know, kids. We did one that had like 80 kids on the stage at one time. Kids 80 on this kids from Greer High School. We had Aren't the, you brave? the marching band. They, they couldn't even, they couldn't get on the stage. They come across the front <laughs> and, um, you know, it just, it really started to, it just, you could see, you know, and the teachers liked it. And, it just, and then, you know, as time went on, we, we kind of had the idea, you know, it'd be great to get this song into all the schools. Right. Well, then, you know, other people that we were friends with got together and then it just kind of turn into a foundation. You know, so. well, that's pretty cool. You're going to have to play one more song. This is WCRS. I don't suppose you could play that one, could you? Can you play that one or not? Oh. No? Well, we don't have if enough yeah, instruments. We, bring we don't have enough instruments. Yeah. Do you have something else that we can close out the show with? Yeah, let's do yes, a sweet home in Chicago. Okay, let's do it. Okay. Oh, mm -hmm. 
more time now. Well, three and six is nine. Nine and nine is eighteen. Come on, baby, won't you? Cornbread and Collard Festival coming up on starts the 23rd through the 25th of April. Of yes. April. And tonight, who's going to be up there at Dr. Mac Arnold's Blues Restaurant? Shrimp City will be there tonight. A.K.A. A Gary Irwin. Gary Irwin, yes. Yes, that's right. And uh, he's going to be playing up there just tonight. George. Just tonight. Just tonight. Yes. So you have time to get up there and go see Gary if you'd like to see him. Always a treat, and of course, we got the Festival of Discovery and the Blues Cruise, and I uh, hope you guys are going to be able to be here. It's going to be a good time, and I'll have to have you back on the radio, and we'll talk some more. We always do that during the Blues Cruise. Always my pleasure. All right, that sounds great. Hey, I tell you what, we are going to finish up here. Max, it was a real treat to meet you here and find out that you're really the inspiration that got him off his butt and got him back to playing music in a big way. <laughs> oh, he always had. It was just a matter of time. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks so much. It's been really great to meet you all. Thanks so much for coming down today. Thank you. Thank you. All right. This is WCRS right here in Greenwood. Bye-bye, everybody.